Welcome. All right. What's going on, guys? I should probably do this. This is the time I actually take the pictures with. You guys can actually see me. This is how I'll stream these games. But uh, I'm going to come with a story time video today, but I thought I'd do it a little differently. Uh, as you see here, I will be playing. Uh, what's this game called again? Counter Strike? Counter Strike Go? CSGO? Uh, I do take my video games very seriously, so I might be a little bit more. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Distracted uh, at times. So I think that'll be. Uh, especially, I might have to turn off the. I have to turn off the sound in the background here. But anyways, uh, what I'm gonna talk about, I'll be playing in the background. So for those of you who are gamers, what's up? Uh, I'm using my girlfriend's account. I gotta get my account up so if you could add me, then we'll play. But glad you guys like it. If not, oh well. I'm still gonna talk about something both. Uh, Stock related and something funny. This game better not be bots. Okay. But what I'm going to talk about is how penny stocks ruins people's lives. Uh, <laughs> and I know I, I don't want to say that so to sound dramatically, but it's actually true. And I'm going to talk about this story of this one guy. I met him online. Um, seemed like a really cool, smart dude. And I'm going to share with you guys his story of how he lost, uh, I think it was over, cumulatively over $130,000, but there was about $30,000, which really, really killed him, that I'm going to talk about, uh, and, you know, just share his, his story with you guys. So, how it started, um, this guy hit me up maybe like two years ago, and it's sad because, like, you know, I say his story... And sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll joke about it because I'll be like, I'll, you know, people have asked me, like, I haven't even heard from this kid, like, in a long time. I have not even heard from him. So, that being said, you know, it's pretty much, I think he's dead. Uh, I don't know if you're watching this now. I'm glad you're alive. Sorry for putting you on blast. But if you're dead, that sucks. And it's sad because, honestly, why would I, you know... I don't really joke about death like that because I I swear to God I think the kid's dead and why I think it's just it's so crazy just because like I just know not too many people could uh, handle what that guy that guy went through really I, I think a lot of people would be mortified especially uh, considering some more facts surrounding the situation so let me get into those to explain ah oh, fuck let me get this guy first where did this guy go. Uh, where'd he go? Man. But anyways, like I said, this guy found me on Twitter. He he hit me up one day. He uh, applied to join the latest pledge class. Um, and he called me right before I, you know, I got on a, a phone call with him. I wanted to interview. I liked his application a lot. Uh, I totally forgot his name at this point. Like I said, no idea who he is. So I, I can't even like protect his identity if I wanted to. Um, but he talked to me, we got on the phone, he said he wanted to join, he said he had some stock trading experience, you see this guy? Man. Said he had some stock trading experience, wanted to, you know, get a little better, and so, we we talked, and he started sharing his story with me, he works at IBM, he makes about 100 grand a year, guy seemed like a smart computer dude, had the background with it, um, so, we started talking, I said, yeah, it's cool, it's like, okay, so, you know, what do you... You know what's been your trading experience like and he shared with me uh, his story of how he actually took uh, about roughly I'd say 20 uh, not twenty thousand dollars he took about two thousand dollars oh, I'm just camping here and I'm gonna get found out but he took about I think it was he started initially with like two or ten thousand dollars and then turned that I think it was two, five or ten thousand dollars excuse me Turn that into twenty thousand, and then uh, what happened was he thought he was man. He did it on Fannie Mae when the government bought out uh, Fannie Mae. You know, a lot of people made money back on that. I forgot how long ago it was. Oh, oh wow, I got that guy from that far. No way. But he made uh, I think twenty, thirty thousand bucks on it, and he thought he was just you know pro trader. Uh, ended up even taking that, reinvesting it in the co company, made 50 grand. Uh, so he turned pretty much a small amount of capital into a very, very, very large amount. And so that being said, 
I don't know if that was a bad idea or not. Yep, that was a bad idea. So <laughs> he he pretty much end of the day took twenty grand, made a hundred grand uh, on Fannie Mae. Thought he was the you know next Warren Buffett, uh, I think, or next Jordan Belfort. I think the movie did come out by that time. So dude is pretty hyped on this, and you know, sorry, I think this is the worst story time ever, simply because I'm so distracted. I'm like just like dragging on everything I'm saying so I could. Just not get killed by a dude with a desert eagle. Come on. But no. So. I f totally forgot what I was saying now. <laughs> what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> said I'm dragging it on. What was it? I swear I had something to say. Uh, I said this guy thought he's the next uh, Warren Buffett. Um, Jordan Belfort, what is the whole point of what I'm trying to say? Oh, yeah, right. Alright. So I'm just wrecking while I'm forgetting. Uh, maybe that's why I like this game. It gives me time to think. Um, but anyways, let me, let me just get back into it. This guy, you know, older individual. Um, older individual made money, you know, trading a stock that probably was, you know, risky. It was a penny stock in the beginning. But obviously it made him with a lot of people money. So it makes sense why, you know... He, he jumped into penny stocks. So this is what happened to make, you know, a short story that I'm totally dragging on. Again, I say that and I'm going to forget what I'm saying. But to make it quick, what started happening, he thought he was a really good trader. He thought that, you know, stories like Fannie Mae and what occurred, that that was just an everyday appearance or everyday occurrence. You know, he was right place, right time. You know, he wants to keep living this out. So what he does is start trading penny stocks, and then, like everybody else during 2014, he comes across a wonderful stock called Mine Mineral Co. Resources, a a company that claimed to be making a weed drink, but then they were a vitamin fizz drink, and then they were a, uh, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> a, uh, they were a mining company at one point, like a literal mining company. Oh man, uh, I got. Damn it, first place winner got me. So, what happened? So, maybe I should pay attention right now. Game's over. So, what happened? He goes and he, he decides to play this company. He's in. And this is what he's telling me because I forgot. I remember. I remember. He hit me up. This guy tells me about himself. I'm like, all right, you work at IBM. You have a good job. What do you need me for? Um, and he says he's been struggling and doing real bad. Says he goes, made the 100 grand. Put in all of the hundred thousand dollars he made from Fannie Mae. You know, this guy took five grand, turned it into twenty, and then took that twenty, turned it into a hundred, and goes and puts it all on mine. <laughs> he puts it all into a penny stock. So what happens? He puts in about a hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars market value of the stock, and sure enough, the stock comes tumbling down. And he said at one point that hundred thirty thousand became worth. Uh, I think it was like a hundred thousand dollars, or not a hundred? Excuse me, a thousand dollars market value. So he bought it for a hundred thousand dollars. Now it's worth a uh, hundred thousand dollars. This guy's shitting himself. So what he told me was that you know he knows there's a big catalyst coming up. It was around November. He said November is the time that weed penny stocks rip up. That more legislation comes through. So he said, yeah, you know, I'm just waiting for the November weed catalyst to come up, and then I'm just going to you know get my money back that I lost from and sell it, sell it back. So I said, okay, sounds like a bright idea. You know, this guy sounds like he has it all figured out. So I said, okay, that's cool. Um, and I started just discussing to him. I said, you know, I was like, why do you think it's for sure going to happen in November? And then he goes on to explain how, uh, man, I'm just killing it here. Uh, he goes on to explain to me how Novembers are the best time of year because that is when 
all the weed legalization comes out. Because remember, this was a, a weed penny stock. So oh, yeah. he goes, he, he's talking about this. And at this point, I'm like, okay, so you've lost your money. I'm saying, where are you getting this money now to, to play this stock? And now this is where it gets good. I'm telling you, this is where the story really gets juicy. Because what this guy decided to do was he wanted to now go and ah oh shit he decided it'd be a great idea to go and take out a loan to get thirty thousand more dollars so that he can go and purchase more of this penny stock that has already robbed him of a hundred thousand dollars so he says all right i'm gonna go in take a loan put a hundred and uh you know put an additional thirty thousand dollars on mine and I told him that was a very, very bad idea. He said he already did it. And he said, yeah, you know, put in $30,000, wait till the November catalyst comes out. Boom. Stock's going to rip. I'm going to sell it. So that is the this guy's logic. And, you know, and he, he's stuck on this whole November thing. You know, like this guy's not letting the whole November catalyst, everything's going to run up thing, slip away from his hands. He's not about it. I should have had that kill. So, he's totally not about it. Uh, it's kind of funny in my opinion. But, so, the, why am I, I feel like I'm just playing bots. I'm literally playing all bots. Okay, I'm getting out of this game. And again, this is the slowest story time ever. I feel like I'm just talking like a retard. But, anyway, so I go, he's just already about it. This November thing, he's made up his mind, and and then we start talking to him. So I explain to him, like, listen, man, like, you've already lost a lot of money. I told him this. Uh, I said, I know he said he wanted to join the trading fraternity. He said he couldn't afford it because he has to spend 800 bucks a month simply to service this loan that he got to average down on mine. You know, after he lost 130 grand, he went and got woes and put in throws in another 30 grand uh, but now this is a loan that costs him 700 a month so i told him i was like listen man um i understand i said i will give you a full scholarship you don't have to pay to join uh all i ask is that you cover the loan i said simple as that i said today i said how much did you take the loan out for he said thirty thousand. i said how much can you sell for today he said thirty thousand. so i said wow you know this is a a, a great time a great opportunity I said, you could literally just go sell out right now. Um, I said, you could sell out right now and call it a day. I was like, instead of spending, you could now save 800 bucks a month. And instead of now you paying some, some loan with nothing to show for it, if the stock goes against you, you could now save it, add it to your trading account, keep your money, and that's that. Damn it. And he said he didn't want to do it because he wanted to, uh, you know, he wanted to cash out and make his money back. He was pretty set on making his $100,000 back. He was pretty distraught that he lost it in the beginning. So I said, why don't you do this, man? I said, at the very least, you don't need to keep $30,000 in. Because if what you're telling me, I said, you think it's going to go up, you know, a couple hundred thousand percent, do all that good stuff. Uh, I said, you know, why do you need to put 30000 I said, you could literally go right now sell 90% of the loan, put it, uh, and literally just go put only 5,000 into it and, and, and hold 5,000. If it goes up a thousand percent, you're going to make what 50,000 bucks, half a million dollars or whatever the fuck it is. So I told him that. And I said, you know, I said, doesn't that just seem like a more, uh, sound idea by you doing that? You could still give an opportunity where you can make 30, 50, a hundred grand if it does what you think it's going to do. And then worst case scenario, you just don't lose all your money. So we went over that plan. He didn't really like it. Um, he said no. He wanted to hold it all because he knew he was right and he wanted to make the big bucks. Just like everybody else, you know, can't blame the guy. But he goes through with that. And we start talking, and, you know, I, I feel bad for this kid from the really from the first day he talked to me. So I'm trying to, like, work out uh, a deal with him. He would call me once every week, and now this is kind of how, how the story went. Remember, we had that call. Pretty much, kid refuses to, uh, uh, kid refuses to uh, take my offer. Pretty much free scholarship. All he had to do 
was close out his accounts um, or close out the penny stock position and instead of um, ah pretty much close the penny stock position and he had to now stop pay off the loan I said you can't have any loans call it a day and you know he really was not about that damn it man this is really I'm, I'm not wow I'm much after trying to do this today much props to those Call of Duty guys who could do commentary while playing a video game and not sounding like a retard because that's what I sound like right now Wow, this is extremely hard. So he declined the offer. Uh, I said I'll keep up with him. I said, listen, man, you know, the smart move here is very, very easy. You just got to sell out of the stock, you know, stop making it difficult. It's a, it's a penny stock. It's not going to go up. It's a scam. Just read their filings. There's no such thing as in November, you know, ripping these stocks all of a sudden. You're not guaranteed anything. You know, I'm set. Pretty much I said the only thing you're, you know, only thing you're guaranteed really is that you're going to lose your money. So he didn't believe that he goes and, and remember at this point he's full still he's still full on his his uh, thirty thousand dollars he hasn't really lost any of the loan money just yet so he has that money and now this is how it pretty much progresses Wow All right so how it progresses about a week or two goes by I think it's like a week and a half and mine drops about 30 percent so now this guy's about down 10 grand uh, off of his loan amount so we call gets on the phone with me he starts talking to me and saying yeah you know i uh i'm, I'm down now it's only worth twenty thousand. i could sell it all and i said okay well why don't you sell it again take my idea man just sell out most of it keep a couple grand in there if you're really really set on this you don't want to look back go do something else um he still was not having that idea he said no 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 november's coming up it's it's gonna be in there you know hang on and, and at this point this guy was telling me he's like yeah he's like i'm he's told me this from the first day too he's like it's just so emotionally damaging and emotionally stressful like i really just he was just saying like he can't keep doing it anymore he doesn't know what's gonna happen so that's why i said i said at that point you know that should have been your sign to just take it all down and call it a day but he wasn't really about that and after 10,000 he lost the, the you know 30% he said he was flipping out pretty big uh, he said he had thoughts of suicide and stuff like that and I told him you know dude don't keep putting this through I, I know it's gonna happen then sure enough two weeks later the or a week and a half later the stock shoots back up 30% comes back up to where it was I think even made a little gain you know dude is is high and mighty right now and and he has the whole literally has his whole account betting on it so I can't believe I just got that guy with such shitty play but so this guy's stoked about it stock goes back up only to now a week later drop 60% so now it, it did that whole 30% move went back up only to now drop another 60% so now this guy's uh, $10,000 pretty much is down to like I think it's down to like five or six and remember this started from 30 grand so 30 grand down to like five or six guys shitting bricks at this point uh, again same thing same thing happens now he gives me a call again and, you know I talked to him, I told him to get out and then you know he thought everything was fine and then pretty much another week later the dagger went in and the stock dropped like another 30 from there and pretty much within like a month of, of him talking to me this stock was already down three percent or excuse me ninety percent so it was um, a, a little bit of a issue to say the least but since that I, 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 I never heard from the guy I don't know where it is he said he's he owes the money you know I, I know that the term for what he, what he was on with the loan he owed that I think it was for like 10 or 15 years a seven hundred dollar a month payment nothing to show for it now he lost the money. It sucks because it was a, you know, a result of his own ignorance and lack of information, which kind of put him in that situation. But then again, there's really no excuses, um, which sucks. But I do feel bad for him. Pray for you, man. If you're hearing this, you're still alive. You know, reach out to me. I totally forgot your name and all that. But you know, 
you you seem like a good person at the beginning. I really wish I could have helped you when I, you know, gave you the offer. But everything happens for a reason. But essentially, that's what I was saying. Now, Penny Stocks ruined lives. This guy haven't heard from him. I have no idea where he is now. In in all honesty, like I'm not even saying that just to be even entertaining or anything. But I literally like I just don't even know where this guy is. Man, fuck. You know, I have I have no idea where he is, uh, what happened, but I, I know that this ruined his life because, you know, what I told him from the very get-go, I said, you know, you're going to take a loan out for something like penny stocks. Like, you know, think about it. Like, this is a, a penny stock. Ah, fuck. I told him, I said, you know, think about it. Like, this is a, a penny stock. And two, you know, it's a risky asset. You're, you're, you're pretty much taking a loan out to gamble. You know, I said, what are you going to tell somebody if this loan backfires against you? What are you going to tell somebody when they look at your credit and they say, hey, uh, what was this $30,000 loan for? You're going to tell them, yeah, oh, I took out a $30,000 loan to buy a penny stock. You know, what is your employer going to say? Yeah, I was down $100,000, so I borrowed $30,000 more to play a company called Mineral Co. Resources that was a mining company but has nothing to do with mining and has everything to do with weed energy weed energy solutions oh i just got popped so obviously i, th I think you know what they'll say uh <laughs> you know it's it, not only that but the fact is i even said you know you're going to be having that payment on your credit for now literally the rest of your life you know with literally nothing to show for it you know i said how do you feel about that and you know when i told him that and it sucks because you know i could banter and rip this guy apart with all the oh why would you do this but that that probably wouldn't help him because at the end of the day you know just looking and saying what did it really get him you know he has nothing to to literally show for it so it, it just sucks because that could have been used in so many ways you know that's that's a literal mortgage payment so it's pretty sad to see someone go like that you know go down that road but Definitely happened in this case. I'm just, just getting intense right here. Man, I suck. But. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh. <laughs> Anyway, so not to be over dramatic, as you guys can see, I had a real story as of how penny stocks ruin someone's but somebody's life. Um, and just be careful, you know. Don't take out loans to do any sort of investment like this. You got to just be be careful with what you guys are doing. You know, obviously, be smart. Use your your God given brain. You know, have some wisdom. Don't be a jackass, please. Oh, I don't know if you guys saw that too. I had to go to the bathroom. So, that was that. This will probably be a very, very long story time. This is my first video game commentary. I'll leave it at that. That was honestly dog shit awful. I have so much more respect for all of those guys who do the commentary videos. I had no idea it was this difficult. Um, I love you. Uh, I want to finish this game. So, it sucked because I finished talking before the game was over. So... That might take away from your guys' gameplay quality. Is that what you call it? Yes. Okay, I fucking hate this game. So, I'm getting wrecked right here, but I guess I'll leave it at that for you guys. I love you all. Stay in school. Where's the camera? Boom.